Most Olympic sports are easy to watch. You cross the finish line, you score a point, but fencing is unique. Because it's so fast and precise, the average viewer has a hard time understanding how the point is scored. The Ohio State Buckeyes women's fencing team is currently ranked number four, but the men's and women's team just recently won the Midwest Fencing Conference Championship, qualifying 22 to fence at regionals for a spot at the NCAA Championship in two weeks. 19 of our Buckeyes finished in the top 10, including Hudson Santana. As the girls were finishing up, the men's team arrived, ranked number three right now. I caught up with sophomore Saberist Hudson Santana. As a Saberist, the idea is for you to move your blade as fast as a bullet and to attack your opponent before they do, anywhere above the waist. Ready? Santana is known to show great emotion when he's off there fencing on the piece. How do you feel like you performed today? I feel like I performed individually pretty well. I was really, really impressed with my teammates, Dominic Hulk and Roscoe Schwartz. Overall, the men's saber team had a great outing. Coming here and being around so many great Olympians who teach the sport of fencing, what do you take away from that? Even though they coach you, what do you take away from that mentally? Each one of them have a little bit of a different mentality, but the one similarity is hard work is key. Everyone's a grinder. It's it's insane. Like being around people like that makes you want to work harder and harder and harder each day, so you can try to get to the epitome of success like they did. At what age did you start fencing, and then why did you choose fencing over other sports? I started fencing when I was 12 years old. I come from the Bronx, New York, so I wanted to get exposed to some different types of activities. I was fortunate enough to get paired up with a really good, influential guy who put me on his foundation, and I stuck with it because I thought it would give me an opportunity to make the Olympic Games one day and also go to a good university. Once you got to the Ohio State University, what attracted you to their fencing program, and you know what do you enjoy about fencing for the Buckeyes the most? I was actually recruited while I was in Argentina for the Youth Olympic Games to come to Ohio State University. I had never uh, considered going to Ohio State prior to that, other than their amazing fencing program. Uh, but since their leadership structure changed and they got Dima Lapkus from Belarus and Donald Anthony came in as well, once they reached out to me and we had some conversations, I knew it was the right fit. How much of an impact did he have on you? When you Did you get a chance to meet him or anything? Or? Uh, I met Nazimov a couple times, in a, not in a collegiate setting. Um, he was a super impactful guy, really, really great coach. I knew all about his legacy. So coming into a gym that he used to train in was really, is really inspiring to me on a day-by-day -day basis to kind of continue to live through his legacy that he left in that gym. When they say that it's a rich sport, what comes to mind for you? Huge barrier to entry. It is hard <laughs> to fence. It is expensive to fence. It's hard to get training. It's hard to get equipment. It's really, really hard. Um, but if you want it enough and you love it enough, there's people around the fencing community that are more than happy to assist you. And as fencing progresses and grows as a sport domestically, there's foundations like the Peter Westbrook Foundation or the Advanced Fencing Fitness Academy Foundation that are helping young athletes, specifically young African-American athletes, get into the sport of fencing. Yeah, because fencing is not a go-to sport uh, for most young African-American, you know, uh, males. And why do you think that is? Do you think that, you know, it, it being a game of chess, is it the intimidation of it? Because some people think it's such an elite sport. I just think that the, like you said, like the elitism, so to speak, of the sport is what really makes our community shy away from fencing. Like I said, there's a barrier to entry financially as well. So with the culmination of the two factors, I think it's really hard for young African-Americans to get into it. And it's easier to kind of play basketball because everyone's playing basketball and football. Everyone's playing football. So it's just it's really hard to find it and get into it. What's your, what's your major? Do you actually want to, um, your goal here is to just go to the Olympics or do you actually want to follow through with your degree and pursue your, your dream career? I hope I could have a healthy balance of both. Uh, my major is finance. I want to go into investment banking, but I also really am going to shoot for the 2024 Olympics in Los Angeles with Puerto Rico. Wow. You played other sports, which were? Basketball, football, lacrosse, you name it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So when the passing of Kobe Bryant, you know, happened, unfortunately, it changed the entire sports world. So how did it affect you? mentally and then what do you think um, the Mamba mentality means for the sport of fencing? I felt Kobe's loss. I was always a really big Kobe Bryant fan. He was a major motivation for me as a child. Uh, following his passing I felt like the 
the aura in the gym kind of changed. Everyone, everyone's a Kobe fan. So we all came in ready to work hard. Even in practice, we were fencing our bouts to 24 just in, in memory and tribute to Kobe. Um, the Mamba mentality is something that's super, super special and super important. And you hone it in in whatever sport you play and whatever you do. So the Mamba mentality that he left behind is definitely something that we as the top athletes try to try to you know, try to utilize, try to get that, try to get that ingrained in us to be like Kobe. Um, once you get on your platform, you know, and you make it big, um, either the Olympics or, you know, as your, your dream career, what are you going to do to give back to the sport of fencing? After, after my fencing career has come to an end, I absolutely want to be a coach or some sort of assistant role uh, to the foundations and the people who have given back to me. I'd love to get back into the community and give back to kids and try to expose them to fencing too so they can have an opportunity similar to what I have. Well, thank you for letting me interview you. Um, I wish you the best of luck. You did really well today. And I'm Hudson Santana, and you're watching Off the Field. Go Bucks. Brianna McNary for Buckeye TV.